Design Shop is very flexible in its workspace. You can customize it to fit how you like to work. You can move toolbars, you can move project views, you can adapt hotkeys to fit the way that you like to work. To start off, any toolbar that you see that has a little handle here is movable and dockable. So I can pull it off of this toolbar. I can move it around where I want it. If I want to redock it, I can double click to have it go back where it was. If I want it somewhere else, I can drag it over and have it redock to that. Or if I had another monitor, I could move it off onto that other monitor and get myself a little bit more real estate. When these toolbars are off, you can even reshape them. So I'm grabbing the edge and dragging it. Let me put that back or you know what? Let me accidentally close it. So if you have these toolbars off of there and you close them to get them back, the easiest way to do that is to right click in a blank spot where that toolbar would be and find the one that's missing the checkbox and put it back. So I click on it, it comes back and then I'm going to double click on the title bar of that toolbar to make it snap back into place. The input toolbar is also movable and dockable. I can drag it off of there. I can again move it onto another screen if I want the real estate, and I can move it back. If I close it, I can right click and find the checkbox. If you can't find the room, if I'm clicking and I'm getting customized, that, that allows you to customize what shows up on the toolbar, but not where the toolbar shows up. If I can't get the room, if I can't find the blank space where the check marks come up, you can also go to view go down to toolbars and find the one that you're missing. So I'm going to put it back. The project view, that's this area over here. It too, movable and dockable. So I can move it off. That just gained me a lot of areas. If I had another monitor, I could move this off and still have access to a huge amount of information from the project view, as well as the entire view window being available for my digitizing and editing. Now I'm going to move this back. I'm going to just going to double click to bring this back. There we go. Other options you have. If you go to tools and options, if you go to preferences, you'll see a few more things here. So on the bottom, we'll kind of work our way up. On the bottom, we have icons and you can have the be in color, which is what I have right now, or you can have them be in grayscale. You can also change the size. So I've got small, medium, and large. So depending on your resolution, depending on the real estate, you may want to change these to better fit the way that you want to work. Now, if you change the icons, it will require a restart of Design Shop to fully take effect. Nothing else in this tab requires a restart. Next up, we have digitizing sound. So if I have this on, when I'm digitizing, every time I click, it will make a sound. I prefer to listen to music when I'm digitizing, so I tend to have that turned off. Other things you can do, you can change your digitizing cursor. So right now I have just the arrow, but you can have it be a crosshair, small or large. You can have it have a circular eye in the middle or not, or you can go full screen crosshair. And that looks something like this. So as I'm digitizing, I now have a full screen crosshair. This is handy for trying to line things up. Let's go back in. Tools, Options, Preferences. I'm going to go back to that arrow. The next property up is Auto Scroll. And what that does is if you are digitizing long and you kind of bump the edge of the screen, it will pan the screen in whatever direction you're bumping. So as long as it's enabled, you can change the speed here, but as long as it's enabled, if I'm digitizing along and I touch the side of the screen, it will pan in whatever direction I'm touching. I'm going to escape to get out of there and escape to get out of the tool. 
auto scroll can sometimes scare people when they're digitizing and it feels like the window is trying to get away from you. So if that happens to you, you can always hit escape to get out of the element that you're digitizing. Hitting escape twice will get you out of the element and then out of the tool as well. If you just don't want to deal with it, you can always just disable it by unchecking that box. Above that, you have constrained line angle. So if I hold Alt as I'm digitizing, I can have the line constrained to a specific degree. Um, it is by default set to 15. That's what I use most frequently. So that's what I tend to leave it as. Above that, we have the point size. So let me, let me get out of this. Have this selected so that you can see what we're looking at. Go to Tools, Options, Preferences. Now, this point size deals with these wireframe points, so the little triangles and circles that you see. When I'm shooting videos, I tend to slide this up to make it a little bit easier for my viewers to see. So as I hit Apply, these wireframe points just got a little bit bigger, a little bit easier to see, and a little bit easier to grab. When I'm dealing with very precise things, I may slide this down so that they're very, very small so that I can see mostly the element itself and far less the points that make it up. You slide that back up and apply and OK. So now you can see I can grab this point. I can move it. It's kind of at an in-between size right now. Tools, Options. So that covers everything in the Preferences tab. Another thing you may want to look at is the design checker. So the design checker, you can customize what you want it to flag and what you don't. Anything with a check mark, it will flag when you look at the design checker. Anything that is not checked, it will ignore. And then tools, options, the measurement units tab gives you the ability to change what measurement units you see things in. So Hoops you can show in centimeters or inches, whichever feels better for you, whichever you know them as. Um, design size you may choose to have in inches, but hoops I tend to have in centimeters because that's what most of them are stamped on the back side of the arms. So I tend to leave it this way. It drives some of my coworkers crazy. Um, density you may show in points, which is a tenth of a millimeter, so you can change lots of different elements of the design, or you can have them all be the same. It's completely up to you. One other feature that I use very frequently is the accelerator editor. I have set up in my software keyboard shortcuts for commands that I use all the time that wouldn't normally have them. And some commands that Design Shop has that already have keyboard shortcuts, I've set up to mimic other software that I use. Before I can assign a keyboard shortcut to a command, I need to know what that name is. So the easiest way for me to do that is to hover over something. And the tooltip will pop up. This is show stitches in 3D. So if I go to tools, an accelerator editor, I don't even have to scroll, I can just type show and I get really close. And I want show stitches in 3D. It already has a keyboard shortcut set up for it. But I can add my own. So if I just type 3 and hit Assign and OK, when I hit 3 on my keyboard, it will show my stitches in 3D. So I don't have to go find whatever when I'm zoomed in looking at stuff and I want to see is this a fill or a satin, I can just hit 3 on my keyboard and it will show up that way. So now you have a few ways to customize your workspace to work better for you.